going to begin, and today we are going to begin to talk about spiritual maturation. I know there's so many people who are on a journey and they're trying to locate themselves in terms of where am I and where should I be? And maturation is a process. We should be maturing in so many different areas. And in our last teaching, we began to talk to you about the first stage of spiritual maturation. And today we're going to talk to you about the second stage. But just before we do, let's bow our heads one more time and ask God to bless this time together. Our Father and our God, we thank you that this is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God that the anointing that is necessary to break yokes, the anointing that lifts burdens, the anointing that gives encouragement, the anointing that heals, the anointing that delivers, let that anointing be fresh. Let the anointing upon my head be fresh. Anoint me with a special word. Give me articulation of speech. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Let there be none of me and all of you. Let this anointing be a transforming transforming anointing that it would help us to mature we thank you oh God that we don't have to supply our own anointing this anointing is coming from you you are able to supply all of our need according to your riches and glory and we decree that tonight and today is a day of glory we decree that thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven for thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let us go to our text found in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing Lee, but by reason of him who was subjected to the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. This is Romans 8, verse 19 to 21. We are talking about spiritual maturation, and the scripture is saying to us, that all of God's creation is standing on its tiptoes, waiting for us to finally come into our true identity, Amen. knowing who we are. One of the greatest attack on the body of Christ is the attack on our identity. Most of us don't know who we are. And if we are suffering, we are suffering not so much from a demonic attack, even though that is real. We are suffering from a true identity crisis. Yeah. We, we, we don't know who we are and what we're called to do. When we find out who we really are in Christ Jesus, we will begin to live as God has instructed us to do, to live as the head and not the tail, to live as first and not last, to live above and not beneath. We are suffering from an identity crisis. We are sons of God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the creator of heaven and earth. We are not beggars. We are princesses and princes, and God calls us his son. And so when we talk about spiritual maturation, we understand that God wants to manifest his glory through us. Glory is organism specific. And so in the scriptures, in the book of Corinthians, the Bible says that everything displays glory. There's the glory that the sun displays, the glory that the moon displays. Everything that God has created has been manifested to display his glory. It was the psalmist that asked the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of God, man that thou should visit him? You have made him a little lower than angels, not a little lower than animals, but a little lower than angels. That means we have to begin to understand that we are created as carriers of divine DNA. The substance that you are made of did not come from orangutans and monkeys. It did not come from an ape. The substance that God made you from is himself. The scripture said when he created you and I, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And so he looked at himself. 
And then he said, after he created us, and let them have dominion. Very important word, the word let. The word let presupposes that there are prohibiting forces that will prevent an individual from fulfilling an assignment, a mandate, or God-given purpose. Let, when, when we look at the creation of God, where scripture says in the book of Genesis chapter one, let there be light. In other words, light could not shine because of prohibiting forces. But the scripture says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. In other words, until you are able to decree and declare by faith who you are in the realm of the spirit, anti-God, anti-purpose, anti-Christ, malevolent forces will begin to prohibit you from manifesting the glory of God. The glory of God, again, is organism specific. And uh, when you look at water, how does water glorify God? When water is fluid, when it's wet, when it refreshes, when it cleanses, it is glorifying God. Why? Because to, in order for you to bring glory to God, you have to fulfill your purpose. Yeah. Now, secondly, let's look at fire. When fire is hot, when fire refines, when fire gives a light, when fire gives heat, when you can cook on fire, what is fire doing? It's fulfilling its purpose, therefore it is glorifying God. Let's look at a plant, let's look at an apple tree. When an apple tree is able to use its leaves to photosynthesize carbon monoxide that we breathe out and photosynthesize it until it becomes oxygen that we breathe in, but not only that, but also produce apples so that we can make applesauce, apple pie, apple cake, apple juice. What is it doing? It is glorifying God, why? because it's providing fruit to sustain us. It is photosynthesizing the carbon monoxide and changing it into oxygen that sustains our life. And so we are able to say that an apple tree is glorifying God. How does man glorify God? How does God expect you and I to glorify him? In other words, until number one, we know who we are. Number two, we are fulfilling our purpose. And our purpose is is to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion, live healthy, and then be productive. And once you are able to fulfill the sevenfold mandate that God has given you from the realm of dominion, not from the realm where you are struggling to survive, but from a realm where you are thriving, where you are making a difference, where you are bringing solution to the table rather than being a part of the problem, you are providing the solution. This is when you know that you are glorifying God. Just because we are sitting in an assembly and our hands are raised and, and we are saying glory to God doesn't mean that we have glorified God. Until you are operating out of your true identity, you are fulfilling your assignment and you are maximizing your potential by fulfilling your purpose, you have not glorified God. God. And so we have a way to go. And this is why the message of spiritual maturation is important. God wants to manifest his glory through us. Glory again is organism specific. That word glory comes from a Greek word doxa. And we know that word because it is the uh, word that forms doxology. And doxology means to infuse the presence, the power, the purpose of God into into a thing, into a situation, into an entity. When you pronounce a doxology, it means that you are speaking good off. And so doxology, when we talk about doxology, the word is translated weight. In other words, you are not a lightweight in the realm of the spirit. You are a heavy weight. God leans on you. God presses his nature and his essence in you. That means that when we talk about God wanting to uh, cause his glory to shine through us, that means that we are in a season where God is glorifying himself through the church. He's putting his weight on us. The word glory. Glory means to have a good opinion, to speak well of. It means to praise as a result of the honor 
honor that is being bestowed upon you. Not only is that, but that word uh, glory also uh, is translated brightness or magnificence or excellence or preeminence or dignity or majesty. Are you getting this? Yeah. When you glorify God, you are displaying his majesty. You are displaying his dignity. You are displaying his excellence. You are displaying his prominence. That means if there is anyone that is a born again believer and you are working in a secular job, it simply means that you are there to show forth the excellence. You should be the best. You should be the brightest. You should be the one that's sitting around the boardroom determining the destiny of that organization or that company and until we rise up and take our place around that table we have not brought glory to God are you with me you're gonna display his excellence you're gonna display his power you're gonna display his 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 not only excellence and power but his eminence you're gonna display his 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 wealth you're gonna display his affluence you're gonna display his influence I am decreeing and declaring the day is going to come where the glory of God is going to fill your life and you are going to live in new realms of excellence you are going to operate in new realms of affluence and influence I decree it over your life when they think about you they're going to think about you as being the best and the brightest in industry I establish it in Jesus name glory speaks of his majesty it speaks of a sense of, of perfection. It speaks of, of someone that actually is per, per, perfected and belongs to Jesus Christ. How many of you belong to Jesus Christ? Yeah. That means that when we are manifested as the sons of God, we're going to be manifested because we are displaying his glory. Now, in our text in Romans 8, it says that the the, the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. And so if God wants to display his glory through, through us and, 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 and display his excellence by using us in the midst of darkness, in the, in the midst of poverty, in the, in the midst of uh, struggle, in the midst of, 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 of uh, warfare, if he's going to display his glory, that means that, that, that there is something that needs to be manifested. And so the Bible says that the whole of God's creation is waiting for the manifestation. That word is an interesting Greek word. It comes from this, the, the Greek word apocalypsis. It almost sounds like apocalypse. Yes. You know, apocalypse, uh, when the world is finally coming to an end and, and everything is, is displayed and Jesus comes back and the world, you know, collapses or the existing world collapses and then uh, Jesus Christ comes back and reigns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But that word manifestation, apocalypsis, and and has the connotation uh, as, as, as of being used uh, by by uh, uh, used uh, in conjunction with 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 the state of things or an event uh, that leads up to something that was invisible being visible. In other words, uh, apocalypse is a process that brings something or someone. From, uh, from out of obscurity into plain view. Wow. You, you, you see, we're living in a time where so many people are being overlooked. Amen. Where people don't even notice you. They don't even see you. You're a non-entity. That word manifestation simply means that you cannot be overlooked any longer. Amen. Your season of being overlooked is over. God is going to begin to reveal to your family, to your friends, to your frenemies, and your enemies who you really are. He's going to show 
the world how powerful you are, how intelligent you are, how anointed you are, how gifted you are. And there are so many people that are sitting in seats or even working in organizations whereby your gifts and talents are not even noticed. In other words, what God is getting ready to do is to remove the veil of obscurity. The scripture says, rise, shine, for thy light is come, and the what? Glory of God, the power of God, the doxa of God, the anointing of God, the, the wisdom of God, the excellence of God, the influence of God, the, 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 all of that is gonna come upon you as he reveals, and you are going to be shining bright like a diamond. That word manifest means to appear. It means to lay bare. It has the connotation of truth being disclosed. And it means that something that was not known is getting ready to be known. Uh, and every generation, God brings his children from behind the veil of obscurity into the realm of prominence, into the realm of influence, into the realm of greatness. He elevates us. And the elevation comes through maturation. Please write that down. Please note. Elevation comes through maturation. So let's go to our second text from out of the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. The scripture says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As long as we remain babes in Christ, God cannot present us to the world. So that means that the, the Bible says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Jesus Christ could not be given until he became a son. Are you with me? Yeah. Until he was son place, until he was mature, he had to remain behind the veil of obscurity. But when he became mature, God was able to reveal him yeah. as the Messiah, wow. as the healer, yeah. as the deliverer, Liver up. Until he was mature, God could not put him front and center stage. Yeah. This maturity process is important. And we are talking about spiritual maturity. But grow in grace. Why grace? You don't have to do it by yourself. Yeah. There is going to be the power of God. Yeah. And all you have to do is what? Cooperate yeah. with the power of God working in you. Yeah. The scripture said it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah. This cannot be done in the flesh. It is done through the grace of God. Yeah. The Bible said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be what? Glory both now and forever. Amen. God wants to be glorified. Yeah. And the way that we glorify God is if we are able to not only embrace the maturation process, but allow him to bring us from behind the veil of obscurity uh, into a place of prominence, a place where we can really begin to make a difference, not only in our family and our community, but in our nations and ultimately in the world. And so when we talk about growing, we have to grow and mature in several areas. And so this grace does not just relegate you to spiritual maturity, but you are going to also grow financially. You are going to grow emotionally. You are going to grow intellectually yeah. you are going to grow professionally yeah. you are going to grow corporately yeah. you are going to grow socially yeah. you are grown to going to grow systemically politically yeah. you are going to grow culturally yeah. you're going to be so cultured and so refined yeah. are you with me yeah. you, 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 your speech is going to be refined yeah. your dress yeah. is going to be refined yeah. everywhere you go people are just going to say there goes a classy woman yeah. there goes a classy man. If that is you, turn to your old neighbor and say, she's talking about me. She is talking about me. 
because you're going to grow. You're going to mature. You're going to grow personally. You're going to grow interpersonally. You're going to grow extra personally. You're going to grow domestically. Let, let me tell you something. When God gets through with you, his favor is going to announce your coming. And you're going to be the favorite sister, the favorite brother, the favorite auntie, the favorite uncle. You're going to be the favorite grandmother. You are going to be the favorite because people always favor anyone that they consider bigger than life. And God is getting ready to bring his glory upon you and you are going to be bigger than life. Amen. You are not going to be hidden in obscurity any longer. Growth. Growth requires a connection with life, with a life-sustaining source. Growth we requires the connection with a life-sustaining source. So when, when, when a baby is born, it, it has to bond with its mother and father. If it does not bond with its mother, for instance, and it, 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 it refuses to be nurtured and to uh, gain uh, nurturance and sustenance from its mother's breast, then it will die. And so this second stage is the stage that is called tikto. Tikto, T-I-K-T-O. It's, it's the stage of bonding. So the first stage is gaster. This is when you are incubated and you grow in a womb. When the womb gets too uh, small and, and, and it cannot accommodate your growth anymore, the womb rejects it and we call that deliverance or, and, and it comes through pain. So the word, the word grow is amazing because it's not just what happens to the baby in the womb, it's what happens to the baby to mature, to maximize its, uh, maximize its potential outside of the womb. Now listen to this. When you're in the womb, that's the gaster stage, that's the first stage of maturation. Uh, you're, you're going to grow, but when you get to a certain level of growth, then you're restricted. So you have to be pushed out into a realm, listen to this, of unlimited possibilities. So you're, 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 you're birthed from a, a, a realm of limited possibilities into a realm of unlimited possibilities. I'm going to say it again. When, when, when you're in the womb, you have limited possibility. But once you're birthed out, once you're delivered, into the world. It, it, you're delivered into a realm of unlimited possibilities. Now, why is this important for Tito? Because the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. When you reach this stage, there's a recognition that I don't have to be afraid of the world. Why? If God plants you in the world, that means that you can prosper in the world because the world does not belong to the devil. The world belongs to God. The earth is the Lord. It belongs to your father. That means the only restrictions you have are those that are self-imposed. The only lids you have are those that are self-imposed. God is birthing you today from a realm where you believe that you, you are in a, a dimension of limited possibilities. I decree the lids are blown to spithereens. I decree that as you mature in the things of the Lord with God, nothing will be impossible. If you believe it, shout, I believe you. You have to understand that we are living in a realm of unlimited potentiality and possibility. Why? Because we're not talking about natural maturity here. We're talking about spiritual maturity. And the spirit realm has no limitations. You see, we live in an earth with limited resources. But my God is able to supply all. It didn't matter who makes the request and how many requests you made. The realm of the spirit is never depleted by a demand. The realm of the spirit is never depleted by demand. So that means that ask and it shall be given. Yeah. Seek and ye shall find. Yeah. 
knock and it shall be open unto you. This word is so important because now that we have you out of the womb of the spirit and, 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 and maturing, your first stage outside of the womb is the stage of Tito. And Tito is the stage of, of bonding. And we call bonding covenant. We call it covenant. Paul said something in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. He said, when, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Oh, yeah. So most behaviors and habits don't require that you pray it aside. It requires that you lay it aside. When you begin to mature in the things of the Lord, God is going to help you to exchange your, your, child, child, your childish scripts to adult life strategies. I like that. God is going to change your childish scripts to adult life strategies. You're going to, you're going to speak like an adult. You're going to understand like an adult. You're going to think like a, an adult. Paul said, the sign that I was immature showed up in my speech, my understanding, and my thinking. It's interesting because I mentor a, a, a number of people. I coach people. Um, I advise people. And it amazes me when it comes to capacity building, uh, I, sitting and talking to people, I can always locate them where they are spiritually or even naturally by what they speak, how they understand, and how they think. Yeah, yeah. That is a telltale sign of the stage of maturation that you're in. Your speech, your understanding, your thinking. You know, I said to one person, you don't understand that. You don't understand that your action caused this outcome. Jesus. That that there comes a time where you stop blaming it on the devil. He does not mind taking the glory. But at some point, you've got to be able to separate a demonic attack to poor life strategies. Jesus. David David said, look, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit. You desire truth in the inward part, you know, and this is where God is taking us. He's taking us into the realm of truth because if you could find your place of truth, you can find your place of maturity and liberty. Yeah. If you can find your place of truth, you'll find your place of maturity and liberty. And so God wants to liberate you and he wants to liberate you as you are mature. So let's talk about bonding. This is a stage spiritually where God begins to check your covenant relationships, your covenant relationships, and this is important. So let's look at 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 17 to 27, and I want to talk to you uh, just a few more minutes about covenant. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 17 to 27. The Bible said, and Naaman, Naaman said, shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules burden of earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Verse number uh, 18, I think, in this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he, and, he, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimmon. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon thy servant in the thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, my master had speared Naaman, this Syrian, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that, that which he bought. But, but as the Lord liveth, 
I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariots to meet him and said, is it well? And he said, all is well. My master hath sent me saying, behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment. And Naaman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and his servants and they bear them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the man go and they departed. But he went in, stood before his master and Elijah said unto him, whence cometh thou Gehazi? And he said, thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet, to meet thee? Is it, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and man servants and maid servants? The leprosy therefore thereof or therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from the presence, uh, from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Now this story is, is an important story because it tells the story of, of being bonded or having a covenant with a man or woman of God. So in the scripture, we know that Naaman had leprosy and he was healed by Elijah. Elijah says to Gehazi, Gehazi, don't take anything from, from uh, Naaman. And neither did Elijah, even though he was offering him a gift. Why would he not want to take it? Because of cr uh, the creation of soul ties in the realm of the spirit. Um, and this is very important. This is very important. And we do have a book called Reclaim Your Soul so that you can understand that there's not just one form of soul tie. There are, there are 32 different types of soul ties that you can establish and not just with people either. So, that, so his, his master or his um, a man of God said to him, it's not time for you to prosper in this way. You are not mature enough for it. You haven't qualified in the realm of the spirit. And so he decided, well, you don't know what's good for me. You don't know what's right for me. And so he snuck behind his back. And when he snuck behind his back, because of the covenant that they had with one another, his spirit went along with Gehazi. Elijah's spirit went along with Gehazi's spirit. And while they were negotiating supposedly behind the scene, God revealed to this man of God the exact spiritual location that Gehazi was in. So when Ge Gehazi comes and says, oh, I didn't go anywhere, then he was caught in a lie. And as a result of that, he lost an opportunity to carry on the legacy of Elijah, Elisha, and Gehazi. And so because he, was one, because he was his son, and because he was bond, because he, had, he was a tikto, are you with me? Yes. He was at the stage of spiritual maturation to prove his covenant with the man of God. And God tested him in the realm of the spirit. Now this is important because I've learned just from my own spiritual experiences that whenever there is, a, whenever a person is in the tikto stage of spiritual maturation, there is a spirit that will attack and it's called the spirit of an orphan. In other words, in other words, this spirit is a sign to cause an individual not to bond with the man or the woman of God or the, uh, their covering. And so they may, be, they may show up at church, but, but the covenant has not, been, has not been sealed. So what the enemy wants to do is when, and I, and I learned this as the Lord was speaking to me this week, he said to me, Cindy, every realm I promote you in 
It means that whoever I have assigned to you or whoever has a contract to you, they have to then be, be reestablished in their covenant with you in the new realm. So, so every time the man or woman of God or your covering, or it even could be your boss, someone that you are working for and, and you, you are contracted by, whenever they're elevated into a new realm, they also have to establish their legal right there. Are you with me? So they're being birthed out. That means that they're in a new realm. That means a new contract has to be established. So there are some people in ministries that are fine when the ministry is small. Yeah. But when the ministry grows, yeah. they walk away from their assignment yeah. because they no longer can have that intimate access with the man or the woman of God because the protocol changes. Yeah. This is what happened to Moses. And this is a teaching from uh, uh, Bishop Jakes. He has this teaching. He said, Moses was first amongst the people. Yeah. Then Moses was ahead of the people. Then Moses was above the people. So he, he's being elevated each time. That means the relationship that he had when he was amongst the people had to be renegotiated when he went ahead of the people, then had to be renegotiated when he went, went above the people. Your, your contract, your covenant, your bond with an individual who is being used by God is with a, an understanding, a mature understanding, <clears throat> that as that person is being elevated, there is going to be different protocols that have to be observed. That means that you cannot be emotional with a covenant. You, you, it has nothing to do with feelings. See, a covenant is not there to make you feel good. A covenant at that level is for your spiritual maturation. And God would choose individuals that are pliable and flexible in, it, in their hand because that man and that woman of God is assigned to build capacity in you. When the stretching comes, it's most uncomfortable. And it's easy for a person to say, I know better than you. But you're not, you're not na navigating in the same spiritual terrain as me. We're in the same terrain physically, but not spiritually. So my perspective is going to be different from yours. Are you getting me? It's like raising children, isn't it? When, when a baby is being uh, in, in the Tito stage, how they see the caregiver or the one that is assigned to sustain their life is different from when they're teenagers. Yeah. That tiptoe stage simply means you recognize that your destiny is attached to that individual or to the person that God is assigning to you. Yeah. So when we, when we talk about this, we look at Gehazi. And, 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 and Elijah said, I know that you traveled in a different realm. How do I know? Because you are bound to me. We have this contract in the realm of the spirit. We have this covenant in the realm of the spirit. This is why it is, in, it, it is important that, that you allow God to plant you and that you are not easily seduced from being planted. Now, you know, you can't, you, 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 I wish I could have chosen my father, but I mean, you know, he came as a package deal. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. So he, he was the seed carrier yeah. and he was responsible to make sure the seed that would be planted in my mother Amen. that had my name on it Amen. was gorgeous. Yeah. Don't get that one. Enough. Now see, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah. So I see myself from the eyes of God. Yeah. Are you with me? So I'm not talking about the outward appearance. I'm talking about the inward appearance. Now, if you, you have problems with how you look, that's your business. But as for me and my house, I don't think God did a bad job. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are too, not just me, you are too. Your physical body carries you. You are not your physical body. The, the real you lives on the inside of that vehicle. Yeah. 
and the person that lives on the inside of that vehicle is drop dead gorgeous. Because you're made in the image and after the likeness of God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you this, that the second stage of spiritual maturation is an important stage. It means that, that heaven has birthed you out. It means that someone prayed you into a new realm. And once you get there, you cannot be an orphan. You gotta submit to someone. You gotta be connected to someone. There are, there are so many people that I'm their spiritual mother that I've never met. And they're around the world. Are you with me? Amen. They're connected to me. Sometimes when I fly into another place, they say, I've been, I've been uh, following you for 15 years, 20 years. Here's all your books. Here's all your tapes. I can preach just like you. Are you with me? They carry my DNA. And so we know through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a part of the package deal is that you be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. But we've got to establish the whole idea of covenant, of covenant, or tikto, that bondage stage. That's a part of your spiritual maturation. Now we learned that there are eight stages of growth and spiritual maturation before someone can access their inheritance. And if we don't get the contract right, if we don't get the covenant right, if we don't get the stage of Tito right, the second stage, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh is aborted. So we've got to go all the way back and ask the question, who have I joined myself with? Or what have I joined myself with? What have I joined myself with? And who have I joined myself with? Tito. This stage is brought on through the birthing process, which we call travail. Turn with me to Isaiah 66, 6 to 9. The scripture says a voice, a noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemy. This is interesting. It's coming from the city. It's coming from the temple. It's coming from the Lord that is rendering recompense to the enemy. The scripture says, before she travails, she brings forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? You remember the whole earth is groaning and travailing and expectations of the manifestation of the sons of God. Can a nation be, can, can the earth be made forth to bring forth in one day? It, it, certainly it can. Why? Because of the first process, the process of gaster. So in, in a 24-hour period, and anything can change for you as long as you are in the process. Your business can turn around in 24 hours. Yeah. Your son can turn around in 24 yeah. hours. Your, your, your physical health can turn around yeah. in 24 hours, yeah. just as long as you understand that is a process. Yeah. And this is why you don't give up on God. Yeah. You don't give up in what God is instructing yeah. you to do. You don't yeah. give up on your book, your yeah. tape. You don't give up in your ministry. Yeah. You don't give up on your business. One day you're gonna go to bed like a Joseph. You're going to go to bed in bondage. You're going to wake up in liberty. You're going to wake up in freedom. You're going to wake up in abundance. Are you with me? So why would the prophet say that the voice of travailing renders recompense to the enemy? Well, there's a little mystery in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. It says, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. So a seed is anything that has a invisible assignment to fulfill a purpose. Mm -hmm. So that means that if all things are working together for good, any womb could birth you up. There are 26 wombs of the spirit, but, but you could be in any one of those wombs and God be birthing you out. And what you don't want to do is to rebuke the devil when God allowed you to be in the fiery furnace. You, you, you don't want the intercessors to pray you out. You want God to be glorified in the fiery furnace. So you've got to be able to determine whether or not these lions 
have a purpose or they've been sent by the devil. So all things are going to work together for good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's going to work together because you might be in the womb and God might just be birthing you out. Now, if, if the, the travailing, that noise, is, is a precursor of, of recompense, that means that if God can just, uh, just get you to cooperate in the birthing process, when he gets through with you, he's literally announcing to the devil, it's payback time. Are you with me? It's payback time. When something is rec recompensed, it, 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 something is being compensated for, indemnified, it, it reimbursed, there's a reparation, reparation, restitution, something is happening. So, you know, it means that things and, 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 and everything that the enemy stole, Everything that the enemy destroyed, everything that he ruined, everything that he killed, everything that he slaughtered, everything that he ruined, everything that he wrecked, everything that he terminated, everything he frustrated, everything he crushed, everything he devastated, everything he demolished, everything that was sabotaged. Whenever God begins to birth you into new wombs, he is literally telling the devil it's payback time. You are going to pay. You're going to pay for hurting her. You're going to pay for, for destroying her marriage. You're going to pay. You're going to pay for uh, snatching her children. You're going to pay for destroying the marriage. You are going to pay for putting cancer on her body. You are going to pay. It's payback time. The voice of travail, the crying out, causes the enemy to go into fear. Because he understands that whatever is being birthed out, God is going to use that thing to indemnify whatever you have lost. But what the devil wants to do is to make you believe that somehow God is not in the midst of your pain. He's not in the midst of your struggle. What the enemy wants to do right there is to cause you to sabotage, to cause you not to be a part of the transitional period, that period where the covenant is solidified, the contract is solidified. It is that period when, when the Tito period comes, a, 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 mo a woman is transitioned into motherhood, a father is transitioned into fatherhood, and the fetus is thrust into a new realm of unlimited potentiality and possibility. This means that whenever God is getting ready to bring you into your next stage, and it could be spiritual, it could be financial, it could be economical, you've got to be able to reinforce your covenant with God. You've got to be able to stand there and say, God, I may not understand everything, but I'm not going to walk away from my contract. I'm not going to walk away from my assignment. I'm not going to walk away from my relationship. I'm, I'm going to reinforce that contract. Why? Because I want to thrive in this period. Now, it always happens in transition. Tikto is the shortest period in spiritual maturation. It is the shortest period. This is what happened to Hannah. The Bible said that she was barren and the Lord opened up her womb and by the way she ends up having six children. She has, ends up having four boys and two girls because God opened up her womb. But the firstborn was proto proto tiktos means the firstborn, right? And then everyone else after that is called a tiktos. That means that you're, you're recognized as being able to thrive and survive outside of the womb. Now I'm gonna bring this home so that we can go into part two. When, when, when Hannah uh, uh, attached the baby to her breast, it, the, the baby was weaned so that he can go on to the next level of his spiritual maturation. And that was him, him to go on so that Eli could really uh, begin to mentor him as a prophet. Now, this is important because uh, you don't go away. You have to be sent away. 
and 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 there's a lot of people who just 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 go into ministry and they've never been sent into ministry they just leave are you with me they have no covenant and and they just leave and so what is happening now in Tito, you see this stage with uh the protocol that that was instituted when it came to the levitical priests they had to stay connected to Aaron. And it wasn't until Aaron had passed away that they matured and was able to go on. Now, this, this means that Tikto, this, this stage of covenant, this stage of bonding, bonding, if the enemy could ever uh, sabotage that, and it's a short period, could ever sabotage this, what will happen is that individual would end up with a spirit of an orphan. Let's pray. Our Father, we give you praise and honor and glory, even as we talk about spiritual maturation, maturing in the things of the Lord. And you've given us an example of Elisha and Gehazi, where we see that the true covenant was not uh, solidified, it was not in place, and he was able to run off without the respect and honor that was due to his spiritual father. We decree and declare now, Father, that you were the one that said in Isaiah, 56 and 6 that also the son of a stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servant everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of the covenant you will bless those individual and I decree and declare that we were one sons of strangers we were alienated from the life of God but father through the blood of Jesus Christ you 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 brought us to yourself and you joined us to yourself and we were fitly joined together and father i thank you that even as there are many individuals that are believers that are looking for spiritual mothers and fathers but because of church hurts father they're not able to trust again they're not able to believe that it's possible for them to find a healthy mature relationship with a spiritual father and a spiritual mother who will build in them the the capacity for their future calling and the fulfillment of their purpose. I pray those that are, are, are disconnected from a body of Christ or even from a place uh, of spiritual community, they are disconnected from the church because Father, when they submit it, because of the lack of maturity of, 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 of the individual that they submitted to, the, uh, they, they were hurt, they were disappointed, and they decided that I can never trust again. But I decree and declare, Father, that while you are moving in their lives and maturing them, they will say unto you, Abba Father. They will call you their spiritual father. And Father, they will begin to nurture and, and cause reconciliation between between you and themselves. I pray, Father, that as we go, hallelujah, into the second uh, part of Tito, and, under, and give us, that, that you would give us an understanding of how important this is and how vital it is for our future growth and maturity. I pray pray that you would bless us and that you would you would ignite a passion in us that 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 we would that that we would allow the Holy Spirit to examine our lives and to reveal to us every area that we have not matured in and areas where either we have broken a contract or a covenant or areas that we need to solidify our covenant either with with a leadership or with our with with you or with one another. I pray that we will not be covenant breakers in this season, that you will mature us in the things of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God.